Can a single Pokemon beat Fire Red if all of the types were reversed? Let's find out. I'm going to attempt to beat Pokemon Fire Red with only the Nidoking line and with all type effectiveness reversed. This means that anything normally super effective is now not very effective. Because of this, many types are going to be super effective against themselves, which is going to really flip the strategy on its head. In order to complete this game, I need a good Nidoran. However, I did not manipulate how the game decides IVs or nature, so I just rerolled a few times. I got a plus attack nature, which felt pretty useful, specifically because Nidoran's starting moves are Peck and Leer. I am worried that this may be a huge problem for the forest, and bug Pokemon, and especially Weedles, are actually going to be terrifying. I will need a lot of experience to beat Brock. In a typical playthrough, Nidoran learns Double Kick pretty early, and that is excellent for Brock's team. However, now that's actually a bad thing. On top of that, just for added difficulty, I'm not going to allow any items in battle. So if we're only using a Nidoran and no items, how can we make this happen? Well, first up, I just train up to level 10 before I face the rival here on Route 22 for the first time. Toward the end of this training, I do catch a Pidgey for Fly. This will be the only HM I will use a team member for since Nidoking learns everything else. And after a rigorous grind for experience on Route 1, I can now try to beat the rival. But his two Pokemon are just too much for Nidoran to handle right now. I tried to use Focus Energy to get luck on my side, but Pidgey can hit Sand Attack when I do that. Plus, it just keeps getting lucky crits and I don't get one. I think that the negative defense nature isn't the greatest, but it's what I have to work with, so I'm just gonna run with it. To make this fight better, I go back and train one more level. After which I can return to fight green one more time, and I am defeated once, but then I can finally take the victory. The boosted trainer experience from his fight gets me to level 12, and I can learn Double Kick. Normally this is really good for Brock, but today it's for the forest. This move will be necessary to make it through against all the bug types and poison types we're going to see there. Peck is not very effective against the bugs, and Weedle's Poison Sting is super effective against me. But with the 4 times damage from Double Kick against Weedle, I can make quick work of the bug catchers. That's why I trained up so much before I went into the forest this time. On my test run, I went here first with Peck, and it was just an awful experience. So Double Kick is a much better way to do it. I clear all the trainers and reach Pewter at level 14, but I'm not ready for Brock yet. Because flying and ground effectiveness is reversed, Nidoran's Peck cannot hit Geodude or Onix, or even a little Diglett. For this fight, Nidoran needs Poison Sting. Plus, I can evolve and get the increased stats of Nidorino before I face Brock. So I use the forest to train up, I skip the evolution at level 16 though, in order to get Poison Sting a level earlier and then evolve at level 17. I then return to Pewter, head to the gym, and walk around the Light Years trainer to challenge Brock directly. Poison Sting is my strongest move in this battle. With 4 times damage and stab, it is roughly 88 base power instead of 15. With this move, I can two-shot both of Brock's rock-hard Pokemon. That does get me the Boulder Badge and the Attack Boost. Now I need to make my way toward Mount Moon. One nice change they made in Fire Red from the originals is that you can actually buy repels here in Pewter, which is really, really nice when heading through the cave. However, I'm not as familiar with the trainers and item locations in Fire Red, so I will continue to improve as I do more runs of this game. If you want to see more of this, make sure to like the video and comment about other things you want to see in Fire Red, other challenges, or other solo runs. I could do a versus video to see which starter Pokemon is the best with these reverse types, so let me know if you want to see that. In Fire Red, Route 3 has fewer required trainers though, so Nidorino's double kicks its way through all the bug catchers here. That gets me to Mount Moon, where I can fight the Super Nerd on the way to pick up the rare candy. And now Peck is the best move against his electric types. And is double super effective against Magnemite? There are going to be some cursed type matchups here in this run. Move choices like this break my brain. I get caught by the spinning rocket and realize I don't have any great moves for ground types like Sandshrew. For now, Double Kick is my go-to, but Peck is better against normal types like Rattata since Double Kick is not very effective. Nidorino destroys the super nerd blocking the fossils. Double Kick is great against poison types like these, but they could hit me for super effective damage too. I of course then pick up the Dome Fossil, as it should be. I can then head to Cerulean and heal up. Here I go straight to pick up the Rare Candy and head to fight Green by the bridge. Double Kick is neutral against Pidgeotto, as usual, but it takes two turns to knock it out. I do get hit by a Sand Attack, but in Gen 3 this only reduces accuracy by a quarter and not a third, so I can breathe a little easier there. Peck then takes down Rotata. Charmander comes out and hits an Ember, but it just can't do enough damage. Nidorino then levels up to 22, where I can learn Horn Attack. Double Kick is super effective against Psychic types as well, so it easily takes out Abra, and with that, Green has been defeated. Now that Nidorino has reached level 22, it is time to evolve into Nidoking. Evolution at this level gives me Thrash, which is a very useful move in the early game. In this challenge, Normal is super effective against Steel, Rock, and Ghost. There is no real downside to this type, but I do have to be careful to not inflict myself with confusion. With these new Normal moves, Nidorino easily sweeps all of the trainers on Nugget Bridge. Being fully evolved this early makes King incredibly powerful. 
It has no issues beating every trainer on Route 25 to pick up the SSAN ticket from Bill. I can then head back to Cerulean and heal up and go straight to Misty. In this battle, Horn Attack takes down Staryu in a single hit. Double Kick is then super effective against Starmie, but doesn't quite do the job in a single blow. Since water moves will be ineffective now that King is ground type though, there isn't much that Misty could even do here. And that means that King easily earns the Cascade Badge. I now need to beat the rocket on the way out of town, but after this battle I had a sudden realization. Ground moves are actually garbage. They're only super effective against grass, bug, and flying. However, the poison type will negate the benefit for almost all grass and bug types. So I guess it would be good against Butterfree and the normal flying types, but for now I decide not to teach Dig. I run to Vermilion and go directly to the SSAN. On the ship, in the room where you would normally find the TM for Body Slam in Gen 1, I can pick up the TM for Brick Break. In contrast to ground moves, fighting attacks are actually much better than they usually are. It now beats the Psychic and Poison types that are plentiful in the mid game. This new move does awesome damage against most of Green's team here. Horn Attack is still better against Raticate and is a good backup. Plus, as part of the medium slow experience group, Nidoking has been leveling extremely quickly so far. After picking up Cut, I am ready to battle the Vermilion Gym Leader. Well, I will be ready as soon as I deal with this dang trash can puzzle. There we go. Surge leads with a Voltorb, which goes down in a single hit. I switch to Thrash when Pikachu comes out, but it leaves me paralyzed after I hit it. Raichu starts to take advantage of this status by setting up Double Team. I finally hit once, but then it gets a massive shockwave. I need luck on my side to get through this. King knows this though and gets the final hit in and claims the Thunder Badge. But with that bad luck with Thrash, I decide to teach Shockwave in its place. A diverse moveset is key for this challenge and I think is just a better use of that slot. I fight a few trainers and pick up their rare candy on the way to Rock Tunnel. When fighting the first Pokemaniac, I get to use Shockwave on Cubone. This is my strategy for all the hikers along the way. This special move hits hard since these Pokemon have low special defense. It is kind of interesting though because this move is technically only singly super effective as a special move which you don't actually get to see in the early generations against rock and ground types. Usually any special move that is super effective is double super effective and would just eliminate these guys from battle. I easily make my way through the tunnel, run past Lavender Town and head east towards Celadon City. My moveset will be unchanged for a while now since Nidoking only has one more move through level up. Now in Celadon I run to the rocket hideout. I'm confident against Poison types because of Brick Break and Shockwave should be useful against Giovanni here. This electric move wipes out both Onyx and Rhyhorn without any issue. Genghiscon is a bit more trouble though since normal types actually have no weakness now in this hack. After defeating the Rocket Leader for the first time, I can then stop by and do some quick shopping in the Mart to get some vitamins and repels for the rest of the game. I run over to pick up Fly and then heal up in the Poke Center. From there I can grab the T and open up Saffron City. It's now time to clear the Pokemon Tower with my new Sylph Scope. King is way over level now, and even though I ran into an accidental battle and went in without perfect health into this green fight, I have no trouble. The level curve for this fight has always felt a little strange to me. Maybe green should have been at the top of the tower where the rockets are, and maybe a much higher level too? I think it would have worked a little better. However, because of the level he's at, Needle King can just sweep his team. After that, Brick Break is super effective against all the ghost types as well. In fact, Cut would be too, and probably would have worked just as well, knocking them all out in a single hit. I make it to the top and shockwave the ghostly Marowak. Now on the top floor I beat all of the rockets guarding Mr. Fuji, after which he teleports me away and gives me the Poke Flute. From there I decide to fight Erika. I'm pretty confident that the strong physical move Brick Break will carry me through this gym, although both Water Pulse and Shockwave are also super effective against Grass Pokemon. I didn't realize how good I was against this type. Erika's team goes down to 3 one hits and I collect the 4th badge. I bike down to Fuchsia and dash through the Safari Zone to get the necessary items there, and a protein for good measure. While in Fuchsia, I can use the Move Deleter to forget Cut. I no longer need this move and I can get some much more powerful replacements very soon. I then clear all of the trainers in Koga's Gym. This is great training and I really need Megahorn before I fight him, which I get at level 43, but even after the last trainer, I'm just a little bit short. So I leave the gym and fight one other trainer in the grass outside the city, which gives me the level up and the new move. Because of the reverse types, Bug is an incredible move. It's super effective against Fire, Flying, Fighting, Steel, Poison, and Ghost. But in Koga's fight, it's still just not quite enough. His final Weezing can survive and hit a massive sludge and take me down. I try again and still miss one turn, so I lose a second time. I decide to come back later. I do stop by and pick up Strength and teach that and Surf to Nidoking right now. These HM moves are powerful and give good coverage. I fly over to Saffron to battle the Rockets in the Sylph building. I defeat a handful of them and get some items and level up to level 45 before getting to the Sylph Rival. 
And here we see the power of Megahorn. It takes out Pidgeot, but then I fail to knock out the Execute. I get paralyzed and take some damage from Gyarados. I do still one-shot it though, even after the Intimidate. Alakazam sets up Reflect, but Brick Break just doesn't care about that. It just shatters it and knocks it right out. Green sends out Charizard, but King survives a Flamethrower and hits for four times damage with Megahorn. And with that, Green is defeated. Now it's time to beat Giovanni and finish this part of the plot. And his poison types are no problem here. I don't have a great answer for Rhyhorn though since I gave up Shockwave, but Return will do. It's super effective, but it's physical damage, so I don't love it. But luckily, Giovanni doesn't ever get a Rhydon in Fire Red for some reason, so I can get by with physical damage for now. I'm not sure why they did Giovanni so dirty with this remake. Not a single Rhydon? I take out Nidoqueen with Megahorn, which means the Rockets are done for. Now at level 47, I fly back to Fuchsia to beat the 5th Gym Leader. But even now, at level 47, the damage from Megahorn is just barely not enough. Koga, who's normally very easy for Nidoking, is really posing a problem today, and that's the effect of that flip type effectiveness. It's basically reversed which gyms are tough. Surge was difficult, Koga's being difficult, but Misty was very easy. I'm getting frustrated with Koga, but I realize that Sabrina should be much easier right now anyway. Her team is weak to Brick Break, and she can't set up any screens, because I'll just break them. So I go back to Saffron to pummel her team, I do end up using Megahorn on Venonat, which was a mistake, but sweeping her team means that King is now level 48, which should be exactly what I need for Koga. This is over another damage rounding point. Being level 48, now instead of 47, will increase my damage by just a little bit, but hopefully just enough. I go back again and start my fifth attempt against this gym leader. But now that King is at the perfect level, his poison types go down in a series of one hits. This means that I can now use Surf and cross the ocean to land on Cinnabar Island. I first clear the Pokemon Mansion, which looks way better here than in the original games. The tiles don't hurt my eyes anymore with the glaring pattern. I can then loop around and get into the gym where I can battle a few trainers so I can get up to level 50. Now it's time to face the leader himself and without a burn heal. Megahorn takes out the first three team members in a single hit. Arcanine does have Intimidate though, cutting my attack. This means Megahorn only does a little bit more than half, so I guess it probably wouldn't have one hit anyway without Intimidate. Arcanine then hits a Fire Blast, but since King is at full health, it easily survives. I then land the second Megahorn and take the win. After accepting the seventh gym badge, I politely tell Bill to scram when invited to the Sevi Islands. While there are some TMs like Sludge Bomb over there, I have all the moves I need to beat the game. Now there's only Giovanni's gym left. And there are actually some changes to the trainers here. The first required trainer in his gym has a full team instead of just a bad Rhyhorn. This is really refreshing for members of the eighth and most powerful gym. But King has no problems getting to Giovanni. His Rhyhorn survives strength and hits a scary face, and this is probably the worst thing it could have done, since it means the rest of his team now outspeeds King. Once I take Rhyhorn down, his Nidoqueen gets a hit in. Megahorn is great for damage against it and Nidoking, but they are slowly chipping away at my health. I luckily get hit by another scary face from the second Rhyhorn. So it doesn't do damage, and I wasn't going to outspeed the Doug Trio anyway. I take the hit and knock out his final Pokemon on my first attempt. This finally gets me the TM for Earthquake. This is much later than in Gen 1, but I'm not going to use it yet. This 100 power move is very good, but I think is less useful in this hack. Instead, I run over to Route 22 to face Green for the last time before the Elite Four. And his team is the strongest one he's had yet. His Rhyhorn survives like Giovanni's, but just misses a takedown instead. Execute goes down to Brick Break while Gyarados just sets up the rain. Surprisingly, Alakazam survives a Brick Break. I was shocked but then it just sets up Calm Mind on basically 1 HP. I'm not scared of his Charizard either, and with the rain still in effect, it makes it even worse, and it faints to a single hit of Megahorn. So Green made a lot of bad decisions there. There's only one thing left to do now, I have to get to Indigo Plateau. I do fight a handful of cool trainers on Victory Road to reach level 58. Then I make a silly mistake and run into a double battle at the end of the route. I didn't even mean to fight this one, since I'm not allowing Pidgey in battle anyway but then they do take Nidoking down, so I just reset. I then have to fight the last two cool trainers again, but this time I lose to a Weepin' Bell that puts me to sleep? Third time is the charm though, and I can finally leave Victory Road and start prepping for the league. After stepping inside and healing, I fly back to Fuchsia. Here, I talk to the move deleter again to remove both Surf and Strength. I need more flexibility in my moveset before the Elite Four. I then use up all of my rare candies to get to level 68 and teach two new TMs to King, Earthquake and a Fire Blast. Lorelei is up first, then I don't have a great answer for her. It may have been safer to backtrack to the game corner to pick up Ice Beam, 
but for now I'm just going to rely on Earthquake and Fire Blast for Cloyster, since I can do decent damage with just the high base power of these moves. Slowbro does take equal damage from Brick Break or Earthquake, so those are kind of interchangeable there. Afterwards, Jinx luckily goes down to a single hit, so it can't inflict any statuses on me. I then hit Lapras with one Earthquake, and it does about half. It hits me back with Confuse Ray and heals with a Citrus Berry. But King has got this. It attacks through Confusion and does enough to knock out Lapras and defeat Lorelei. Normally, the next guy is a pushover, but today Bruno is actually set up for success. In fact, in my test run, he gave me more resets than any other trainer. That's because last time I still had Surf, and that's just not good for Onyx here. Instead, I use Fire Blast, which deals with Onyx much better. Megahorn is great then against the fighting types and takes down Hitmonchan, but if I miss, I take massive damage from Hitmonlee's Brick Break. I cross my fingers and hope that I hit Machamp, and I get it. The last Onyx then goes down to another Fire Blast. And that means Bruno is defeated, but it's time for Agatha. And this is where, in my test, I hit a complete wall. In order to reliably beat her, I need to one-hit every member of her team. Any poison attacks like Sludge Bomb or status conditions can ruin this fight. And Megahorn only has 85% accuracy. The big kicker is that when Arbok comes out, it lowers King's attack with Intimidate. In my previous run, this meant that there was no way for me to one-hit it, and it would take me down with Sludge Bomb every time. This time I have enough attack with the plus attack nature and the extra levels though, so I can knock it out despite the lowered stat, and after that all she has left is a Haunter. That means that I'm further than I've ever been in this challenge. The battle against Lance the Dragon Master. I take a moment to plan out what to do here. Earthquake deals massive damage to Gyarados, even with Intimidate. He then sends out Aerodactyl, which surprised me. Earthquake is neutral here and Megahorn is physical damage, so I decide to use Fire Blast. Except I miss and get hit by a scary face. Now Aerodactyl outspeeds and hits a super effective Ancient Power, which is physical in this gen, so my lower defense is actually a big detriment. And that sets up Dragonite to KO with Outrage. I restart and try the same strategy again. But then I miss Fire Blast again and get taken out by Dragonair with Hyper Beam. I try a third time with the same tactics. I know that if I just don't miss, I can make it through. And with enough luck, I can hit every attack, I can get to Dragonite at full health, and easily tank the Outrage. This pseudo-legendary then goes down to a second Earthquake hit, and I can finally defeat Lance. Which means there's only one battle left, the Champion Green. I keep the same moveset for this battle. King is now level 70 and has the perfect moves to win. We start off with Megahorn for Pidgeot. Up next is Fire Blast for Rhydon because of the low special defense and super effective damage. After which Brick Break takes out Alakazam. Earthquake then does the same for Execute as well. Gyarados does have Intimidate again, allowing it to survive an Earthquake. Green then uses five full restores, bringing Gyarados back to full health over and over again, but all to no avail since he can't get an attack in. Eventually his items run out and Gyarados faints. I still have green health, King lands the Megahorn, and Charizard goes down. And that means that King has completed the game, with a final real time of 2 hours, 6 minutes and 29 seconds, and a game time of 4 hours and 38 minutes. The reverse types in this challenge really changed how you play the game and changed where the difficulties would be in a normal playthrough. I do want to try this again maybe with the starters to see which one's best, let me know if you guys want to see that. Or if you have any other hacks or challenges you want me to try, let me know in the comments. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and as always, have a wonderful day.